Vedic mathematics was taught and rediscovered from the Atharva Veda and the Rig Veda by Jada Guru Sri Bharati Krishna. He extrapolated Vedic math from the Atharva Veda after studying these texts for years, and with careful observation was able to reconstruct a series of mathematical formula. Extrapolation means to take what you learn in one place or text and apply it to a different context, one that can bear little resemblance to the original context. So Sciences Dope published a video calling Vedic mathematics a fraud, and he mainly bases this on the opinion of just one professor named Professor S.G. Dunny. The research paper that I showed you was Myths and Reality on Vedic Mathematics by Professor Shri Krishna Dhani, a professor of mathematics at IIT Bombay. Now, he was the most vocal critic of uh, Vedic mathematics and you should read his paper if you are interested. I'll link it in the description. Now After reading S.G. Dhani's paper, as well as watching a few of his lectures and talks, it has become evident that his disdain towards Vedic maths is not because of any scientific reason, but rather that he does not appreciate scholars being proud of the Vedas or to have nationalist pride. Let me explain. In his paper, he says Vedic mathematics is harmful to India's image as a mature society. He emphasizes that an unfold sense of Indian pride, which was an emotional reaction to colonization rather than intellectualism, led to extremists and misguided elements in society fabricating euphoria for a sense of pride in the Vedas, and that their only concern was to instill a sense of national pride in children. Dunny goes to the extent of saying that it is shocking to see vested interests and misguided people exploiting the urge for cultural self-assertion felt by the Indian psyche. Here is a snippet of him saying that the Indians who came up with the atomic theory of matter in the past were not devotional mainstreamers, but rather rational Chavikas who rejected the Vedas. particular thing, <coughs> they believed in the atomic theory of matter. This is, uh, I think, uh, you would all have heard that uh, the, the, uh, people often mention with pride that we had the atomic theory long before the West, etc. And here I am going to give you some details about, uh, uh, discuss some, uh, talk about some details about that. Firstly, it should be mentioned that the people who talked of the atomic theory, they were not from the mainstream of uh, Indian uh, intellectual tradition. They were actually the rational thinkers. The <coughs> Uh, atomic theory uh, was initiated by uh, Kanada and later developed by various people like uh, Gautama as well. One Firstly, from this video, you can see Dhani's bias against devotional Hindus. And secondly, he's also wrong on this point as Acharya Kanada was a Hindu sage who went on a pilgrimage to Prayag when he first thought of the atomic theory. And even his Vaisaka Sutra proclaims the pointlessness of Maya an understanding of God will set one free from karma. Here is a snippet from Dhani in one of his presentations where he said Sanskrit should not impress anyone and even tell students that they can change Sri Bharati Krishna sutras to English. Pick uh, similar strings in English and use those strings rather than the sutras and it will not change anything at all. Okay, so uh, the... <coughs> And the, that there are these Sanskrit sutras should not really impress anybody, which unfortunately it does. Dunny then says that Vedic mathematics is not useful because it is convenient to follow the standard maths, especially since equipment such as calculators and computers have made it unnecessary. And Pranav uses Dunny's argument in his video. Instead of spending time figuring out what trick to use in a particular situation that you encounter in your day-to-day -day and then applying the trick you might as well just use regular multiplication and and you'd be better off Danny says the same thing during his lectures telling students that rather than using shortcuts from vedic maths just use google of tricks applicable only to a in, a, to a, in certain special instances. How much time you in, uh, want to invest in learning about these shortcuts when, when you can actually go to Google and find your way is uh, something uh, that <coughs> needs to be taken into account. 
Well, it most definitely is useful, especially to children, as Vedic math will allow them to quickly recheck and confirm their answer. Instead of passively relying on a calculator, they are actively utilizing their brain. Vedic math can also be helpful to students preparing for competitive exams by increasing both speed and accuracy. Moreover, does Dunny, as a professor, not know that Google is not allowed in an exam environment? Even the University of Northern British Columbia published a paper that showed Vedic math is quicker for computer processing, and thus they suggested it could also be better for students, especially for the students who struggle to recall concepts at a later time or have math anxiety. Dunny's next claim is that Vedic math is just not useful. Uh, about its uh, utility, etc., uh, I will, uh, as a scientist, I will not try exceed my brief about uh, uh, what can be said about it. As far as I am concerned, it's not very useful. In his paper, he says that it's totally false that Vedic maths could lead to improvement in computers and that it only deals with some middle age and high school level mathematics. Lastly, Dunny says, and I quote, Despite all its pretentious verbiage, page after page, the Swamiji's book offers nothing worthwhile in advanced mathematics. Modern mathematics, with its multitude of disciplines, would be a long way away from the level of Swamiji's book. And Vedic mathematics offers nothing in the way of advanced mathematics. And so Vedic maths has actually been adopted by NASA for the purpose of artificial intelligence and that it is now being used because it is 10 to 15 times faster than conventional methods. The Global Journal of Engineering Education published a peer-reviewed article that explains the implementation of Vedic math algorithms in digital signal processing. Digital signal processing is a technology that is present in most engineering disciplines and converts signals from real-world sources into digital data. Using Vedic math, a processing time of 42% is saved. I will be debunking the idea of Vedic mathematics because they're not from the Vedas at all. So the actual definition of Vedic simply means relating to the Vedas. So this clearly indicates that since Sri Bharati Krishna extrapolated his information from the Vedas, it by definition makes it Vedic in nature. G. Dunny even goes to the extent of comparing Indian people who share Vedic mathematics with the rest of the world to missionaries spreading their religion. It is evident that Dunny dislikes ideas relating to the Vedas or Hindu culture. There is another video of him during a conference on integrating science with society where Dunny is saying that promoting Galmutra has Hindu revivalist nature and has no basis in science. And he even uses Drew Frate's experiment to back up his assumption. Liquid, then mix some Gomutra with it uh, and stir it. This turns the solution back into a transparent liquid. Some analysis of uh, this example, apart from the various uh, obvious revivalist and commercial biases, commercial in respect of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Presenter concludes by uh, just, uh, asking, suggesting that you buy this bottled uh, Gomutra from uh, which is marketed by various companies. Uh, um, revivalist and uh, commercial biases involved. There are so many things wrong with this. Okay, uh, this and uh, this. There is another thing that was pointed out by Dhruv Rati, in, uh, he may, who made a made a video on uh, the original video. So from the information I've shared, it is clear that Dunny has a prejudice against Hindu culture and hence disdain of Vedic mathematics. Dunny would rather use an experiment done by Drew Vrate to propagate falsehoods about Hinduism than do his own research. For on the topic, I would like to point out that the Journal of Drug Delivery and Therapeutics published an article that explained the medicinal benefits of Gaumutra. A few notable mentions of the pharmacological benefits are antimicrobial and antifungal activities against clinical pathogenic microorganisms, increased wound healing activity, it can be used to treat corrosis of liver as well as stomach, kidney and heart disease. They even found that it had anti-diabetic activity on rats. 
The United States even has a patent on Galmutra that proves it can make antibiotics, antifungal and anti-cancer drugs more effective. And instead of doing research, Dunny is just validating himself with experiments that have no standings whatsoever. Now there is some political motivations behind this as well because it helps propel certain ideologies very easily. But the government doesn't seem to understand this. They've shelled out massive amounts of public money into teaching Vedic mathematics. There are state syllabuses that teach Vedic mathematics in their textbooks. And parents are shelling out money in hopes that their child can learn this and become IIT geniuses. This shows the real problem Science's Dope has with Vedic mathematics. To conclude this video, I just want to point out that Science's Dope calls Vedic mathematics a fraud fundamentally on the opinion of one Hinduphobic professor. An ethical science channel would have looked at the consensus of Vedic mathematics in the science community as a whole. Also, using Kiwara opinion does not cut it as scientific research. How Vedic maths could lead to improvements in computers, all these claims are a far cry from the truth. One person or a small group of people disagreeing with a body of work does not make that work invalid. I think it's clear to conclude that Vedic mathematics is legitimate.